The land was filled with violence, desecration, infringement, outrage, assault, and lust for power. Does that sound like the world we're living in today? <laughs> Dedication, preservation, preservation. Take a look inside. Be your salvation. Do every good work. Every good work. It takes patience. It takes patience. Like a butterfly. What's up guys, Sophia here back with another video. If you are new to my channel, then don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated on all of my videos. And also don't forget to check the description box because I always put a lot of stuff in so, there. So what we are going to be talking about is the end of the world. No, I'm just kidding. Kind so of. what I want to talk about is what's going on in the world today. This is not going to be some type of traditional end times prophecy that sort of thing because you know we don't know when the end of the world is coming one thing that the bible is very clear on is that we don't know when the end of the world is coming <laughs> and so with that being said it is important for you just like the bible said to always recognize the sign or those without those with wisdom let him hear so really i feel like the signs is always in the bible and not in the revelations where we're going to try to interpret that but in terms of understanding how god operates when he is specifically frustrated with mankind because it has happened several times and so when we read about these things just like the bible son says there is nothing new under the sun and everything that has been done has been done before and i am paraphrasing um in that so don't be like oh this is not exactly what it says i'm paraphrasing okay but basically you have to understand that when god gets frustrated with the world today there are certain signs to look for and there are certain ways that he takes action and there are certain ways in which you can remain safe because god clearly tells us this which is why it's important for us to read the bible so we know how not to face god's wrath or so that we can be vigilant about everything that is going on in the world today so the first thing that i want to get into is genesis 6 and it is um the story of moses i'm obviously not going to read the story or excuse me the story the story of noah i'm not obviously going to read the entire story of noah but i want to point out some specific things that you can apply to the world today especially when it comes to being vigilant right so if we go to genesis 6 11 it first says the population of the earth was corrupt absolutely depraved spiritually and morally in god's sight and the land was filled with violence desecration infringement outrage assault and lust for power does that sound like the world we're living in today? I don't mean, think that we can deny that this is definitely in a times where we are just seeing this on a very rampant race. We could definitely do our part. Don't misunderstand me. But you also must pay attention to the writings on the wall and the fact that this is just the ways of man. And when people start to get like this, this is when God starts to get agitated and this is when he starts passing out some judgment. And so if we continue on to verse 12, it says, God looked on the earth and saw how debased and degenerate it was for all humanity had corrupted their own way on earth and lost their true direction. And see, that's really the problem because sometimes, in my opinion, it's like humanity in this day and age has definitely gone backwards. We believe some crazy stuff. People do not fact check anymore. It is full of hatred, abusiveness, and strife. And one might think that as time has gone on, that we will learn to love each other. There are people who will be like, God bless. And when you look at the fruits that they bear, and this is something that I personally believe is like somebody can hold up the Bible and say, God bless all they want to. At the end of the day, you need to look at what type of fruits that they're putting out. Are they divisive? Are they spreading hate? Then it really doesn't matter because the type of fruit that I'm bearing is not things that are godly. So that's one thing that I always say, whoever you choose to listen to, whoever you choose to follow and whatever you choose to believe in, you need to understand that you need to look at what they are about really and what type of fruit or what their platform or what their brand or what their actions speak because ultimately, God is going to judge you according to that. So then going down to verse 13, God said to Noah, I intend to make an end to all life. 
for through the land is filled with violence and behold i am about to destroy them together with the land so we all know that the world that we're living in today is filled with a lot of violence when really like i always say what does god tell us to do love one another and love love god that's the first commandment with all of our hearts this is what jesus tells us to do and love your neighbor as yourself if we were so focused on that like literally if we all followed just those two commandments we would not have any problems we would not have hate we would not be murdering one another we would not be going to war with one another like literally if we want to solve world peace everybody needs to make it in their mind to love god and to love everybody as their self and god will judge each and every person in the end it is not up to us to pass judgment or feel like we need to kill somebody or hurt somebody because it is within us to pass judgment on somebody else because really that's just provoking violence and this is where the world today has like it says gotten away from their true direction our true direction is now just lost in my opinion but you also have to understand that when you get into that realm god is going to pass judgment on you regardless just like he said i'm going to kill everybody basically and the only reason why noah was saved is because he was righteous which we see in genesis 7 1 then the lord said to noah come into the ark with all of your household for you in parentheses and amplified alone i have seen as righteous doing what is right before me and this generation and, it, and this wasn't to say that everybody in the land of noah i'm sure that plenty of them were jews and i'm sure that plenty of them believed in god but ultimately what did i just say what matters is you are righteous and you are doing what is right. We all have a moral compass that we should be following and we should be directed by the Holy Spirit on what we should be doing and not necessarily following popularity or what other people say is right and we don't necessarily feel it as righteous because that is what we're going to be judged on. At the end of the day, when the world is in strife and when everything is catastrophic, when the world, because we know eventually this is going to happen, now whether you're going to be alive during this or not, that's to be determined but you don't want to miss the boat and saying oh the end of the world is not going to come for another hundred years from now you don't know that it could be coming now just like God says it's a thief in the night we don't know when it's going to come but your responsibility is to remain righteous because God is always watching you do you think that Noah was like oh I'm just going to be wait to be righteous when God tells me the end of the world is coming no because if he would have waited for that to happen then he would not have been saved Jesus excuse me God specifically told Noah that he was going to be saved because of who he was it wasn't an after effect thing like oh I could get it together whenever I feel like it because I have time you don't know that you don't know that and the only way and this is not even to say to protect from the end of the world this is to protect from everything around the world is a complete and utter whirlwind and you need direction from God on where to go and how to be safe and so if God is inflicting these type of things because I believe that everything God knows about don't make no mistake about it nothing is going on in the world that God don't know about or that he did not allow right and so in the times when everything is going to crap how can you determine to be safe and know it this was a very literal safe in the certain sense that he was going on a boat to prevent himself from like drowning to death like everybody else but how can you be safe is that God will always speak to the righteous when he is issuing some type of judgment or whatever onto the world which I personally believe that he is i mean look at the world let's not make any mistake about where we are headed you know I, like i said this is not end of times but you need to be vigilant this is not normal what we are going through overall is not normal aside from corona aside from the protests aside from the racism aside from how we hate openly hate and divisive with each other none of this is okay and none of it is normal and we have become so accustomed to normalizing this because it has been a progression over time of how this has turned out but make no mistake about it this is not what god intended for us and every time he sees it he tends to get a little angry right and so with that being said if you want to know be in the know because what was the ultimate outcome of noah noah and his family was safe and everybody else died N noah was like yo y'all want to know what's going to happen they laughed at noah because at the end of the day they were not aware of what was going on because they were not plugged into what god was doing and they were not plugged into what god was saying and god was not speaking to them because they were not righteous and so they laughed they ignored it and ultimately they perished now perish does not have to be a literal death in this time you don't know what type of punishment god is going to inflict on the world and you want to be one of the saved because 
because just like the Bible says, I can learn to be content in all things, um, whether I'm well fed, whether I'm hungry, whether I go without, whether all these things, because the reason why he said that is because ultimately God is because ultimately God is going to provide for you in all of these situations regardless, right? That's why the Bible says, um, don't worry about the next day, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. Look at the sparrows. Does not God provide for them for every day? Um, God will also provide for you. So God can provide for you despite what is going on, but you need to be one of the righteous. Now we're going to go into um, the story of Lot. So when you think about it, Lot is very similar to Noah. Um, you know, after God flooded the earth with Noah, he did promise not to flood, kill everybody again, right? But he still will take judgment out on certain communities in certain ways. Maybe not on a massive level as in I'm like, everybody's going to die. But there is suffering and we can specifically see that with Sodom and Gabor, which was a specific area that was highly evil, for lack of a better word. So if we go down to Genesis 18, 20, it says, the outcry of the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah is indeed is indeed great and their sin exceedingly grave. I will go down now and see whether they have acted as vilely and as wickedly as the outcry which has come to me indicates. And if not, I will know. Never think that we're going to hide what is going on and what is in our true hearts from God. It's very important for us to know that if you are evil, if you are vindictive, if you are doing a bunch of stuff, don't ever think that, oh, I can hide who I am from God. No, he's going to know. And it's like sin and violence and all of these things cry out from the earth in order to get God's intention, especially in particular um, areas, if you know what I mean. I feel like especially what's going on in the United States today, let's just be real, especially what's going on in the United States today, in particular areas, they cry out to God saying something is wrong here. And that's when God starts paying attention and, and he starts to do what he needs to do in order to pass judgment. And so when we think of the idea of Sodom and Gomorrah, he had this conversation with Abraham and I'm not going to read all through it. And he said, if I could find, cause God was going to kill everybody. And Abraham said, if I can find 50 people, 40 people, 10 people, he went through this whole thing. Will you not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? And God was like, okay, I'll, I'll call your bet. If I can find like 10 people, I won't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And the only people that he found was Lot, was one person one person and also Lot's family was kind of sort of spared except for his wife who decided to look back like a crazy person after God had told them not to which was ultimately a test that was going to be I have told you how you need to get saved from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah you need to leave because I have found that you were righteous and there are tests God might be sending us tests all day every day on how we act on how we behave on how we talk to people on how we deal with one another and because we think oh this is on social media or we're hidden or whatever the case may be that that God don't see that he does and I literally read a meme the other day if you guys don't know um Chad Chadwick the guy who did Black Panther had died from colon cancer and literally I read it wasn't a meme but it was a thing where I guess previously people had made fun of him for getting so skinny and secretly that guy was battling colon cancer and he was fighting for his life see this is a type of test that we don't necessarily know that God is putting before us to test our character. It's like you don't know what other people are going through. This man is sitting up there fighting for his life. And if you and if your first thought is to make fun of him and to be and to think that it's funny or to make fun of his appearance, then you're still operating in the flesh because that is not godly. And sure enough, that is not what God is telling you to do. So how do you know that wasn't your test to see how you was going to behave? So you don't never misunderstand the tests that come to us daily to test our character. Then people in Sodom and Gomorrah didn't know that the angels who came down were angels and they were being tested to determine if God was going to pass judgment on them or not they didn't know that but that's why you always act in a righteous way so that you don't get judgment passed down on you and ultimately even once the secondary test when he was like don't look back you're gonna die um lot's wife was like oh i don't trust god let me look back and she died god don't have no mercy when it comes down to handling um to handling things and really issuing out judgment on the way that things are going 
in order to get people on the same page again, God don't have no mercy. Like if you read the Old Testament and even the New Testament, it's like, yes, God loves us, but understand he, he has his limits and he created the earth and he's not going to let us so but destroy ourselves and everybody else in the progress, in the process, but so much, right? And it comes to a point where he's like, y'all are doing too much. I am going to hurt your feelings. And this is why I think we definitely need to pay attention to what's going on in the world today you know we had a pandemic that shut down the entire world what else could have done that never think that everything comes from the devil because we don't know that we don't know that never think that this pandemic shut down the entire world in 2020 in the day and age that we are in just like that and really nobody saw it coming and so you have to understand what God is doing how God is moving and shaking so that you can be on the right side of things so that if things get worse I don't know God might be like oh this is enough whatever but if things get worse you need to be able to make it through you need to be able to make it through this process and be determined one of the righteous so God can speak to you and tell you what's happening and tell you how to navigate through it. Otherwise, you're just going to be one of the ones who are going to perish. And this doesn't mean death or that sort of thing, but perish and suffer in the world in which we're living because you were like the people who God flooded out or you were like the people in Sodom and Gomorrah continuously not listening and watching and seeing the direction that God wanted to go, continuously failing the test, continuously doing worldly things, paying attention to the world and acting in a worldly way instead of a godly way and not understanding that something is going on here and it's not necessarily right and you need to be vigilant and you need to have your eyes open and now God might be calling everybody out to repent by sending these little signs saying you need to get yourself right but instead of you paying attention you ignoring it and you thinking everything is a game or not that serious or whatever the case may be never make a mistake about it that oh everything in the bible is mythical or fictional it isn't but just like the bible says when you read it you need to ask god for discernment and you need to have wisdom to understand it because the bible was written in a day where they didn't have stuff that we have technological advances and, and all that that we have so the way that they write things or describe things may be completely different from the way that we describe things but it doesn't mean that it's not true and that's why you need to pay attention and ask god what does this mean for me today because god sends very very clear signs of when I'm tired of y'all this is what's going to happen and though the only ones who are going to be saved are the ones who determine to be righteous and I don't care if I have to wipe out an entire city except for one person I don't care if I have to wipe out the whole world instead of one person that will certainly be done if I get tired enough and you don't want to be in that specific um instance and whatever the punishment God decides to issue out in the days of you know we're living in now or in the days of the future i certainly feel that we need to be vigilant so i hope that this isn't scared you too much it definitely wasn't meant to scare you but it was definitely meant to wake you up and pay attention and to ask god for your own discernment about what's going on during this time so you can fall on the side of the righteous and not the side of the perishing punishing weeping and gnashing of teeth and you're gonna be mad when you're not on the right side of the fence and it's too late right Right. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys another day, another time. Bye, y'all. Not ready for the show to end? It doesn't have to. You can head over to my site where you can read hundreds of articles. And also, you can feel free to shop my store where I have all of my products for sale. And last but not least, for even more video content, feel free to visit my YouTube channel where I talk about a wide array of content. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And until next time, stay blessed.